Hey everyone, in today's video we're going to talk about one of the ultimate while you're in there fixes for Pioneer X3X receivers. What I'm about to talk about might actually be relevant to uh, later Pioneer receivers also, and maybe even earlier, I'm not exactly sure, but I'm certain that the X3X series of Pioneer receivers, at least the uh, 636 and up, uses the 2SC1451 transistor. Now this is something that I learned very early in my uh, time working on this stuff. The first receiver I ever fixed was a Pioneer SX636. The issue with that receiver was I'd just be listening and I'd get like, you know, loud cracks and pops or whatever and then it would turn into basically an AC hum. And when I took the grill off of my speaker when it was doing the hum, I saw the woofer was literally sucked in to the speaker. And if I reversed the polarity on the wires, it would push the woofer out of the speaker. And what that is, is DC current. And it was because I had a failing 2SC1451 transistor on one side of the amplifier. Lucky for us, the 2SC1451 is really easy to identify. I'll show you right now. So this is the power amplifier board. We know this because it's got uh, wires going to transistors that are on a big heat sink. The 2SC1451 transistor is that. It's that little silver cylinder looking thing that's basically a heat sink on the transistor and uh, the body is uh, you know inside of that little heat sink. There's another one over here for the left channel and uh, the function of these transistors on this receiver is they're the bias transistors. They're responsible for controlling the amplifier's bias on each channel. What happens is they get noisy, they fail, and they have the potential to send straight DC voltage right to your speakers. The SX737 and higher models are lucky, however, because they've got this thing right here. This is a protection relay. This is what makes the little click sound when you turn on your receiver if it's equipped with one. The Pioneer SX636 and below does not have this. So there's nothing on the receiver to protect your speakers from failures inside of here. Another thing that likes to fail on this board is the differential pairs. Pioneer used 2SA726 transistors for the differential pairs. They are right there and right there. Those two. Those guys can fail as well. That's actually kind of what we just saw in the phono preamplifier in the previous video. If you haven't seen that one, check it out. Here's those transistors. I replaced all six. Because when I ran these on the tester, all six of them turned out fine. They all tested good. Nothing was supposedly wrong with any of them. But we heard those big issues. We were able to isolate it to the phono preamp because I could I could control the volume of the uh, the popping. But when it's happening in the power amplifier, you've got no control. It's just going straight to your speakers. So since this was in here, I told the customer, hey, you should really consider doing this, and I'll do it for you for not very much uh, extra. Because it's just six parts, you know? And these parts are like less than a dollar each. And I've got them on hand because these X3X receivers are notorious for transistor failures. I think I've had transistor failures on almost every single one of these I've worked on. So I'm just gonna real quick show you how to replace the uh, 2SC1451s and the uh, differential pairs. So first of all we gotta get them out and lucky for us that's really easy because uh, the power amplifier board is completely exposed on the bottom. We don't have to do anything to get to these solder joints. So we'll just take it and flip it on its side, like so. I've already got the bottom cover off from before. And uh, I'll kind of slide it this way. We can see right in here, this is where we're going to be soldering. So it's not really easy to uh, find which solder joint you need to undo if you don't do this too often. but. All I can say is just, you know, look for patterns on here, and then look for patterns over here to see, you know, where are these joints going to be. On Pioneer receivers, the transistors are arranged in like a little triangle, the side joints that is, so you can get to them pretty easily. So you can identify them that way. We'll take the FR300 and we'll get them on out of there. Alright, 
right, so we've got them out now. Um, here are your 2SA 726s, and here's your 2SC 1451. You can see it kind of says that right on it there. So, what we're going to replace the 2SC 1451 with is called a KSC 3503. So, we'll just take two of these out. And we'll put them right there. And we're going to replace the uh, 2SA 726s with KSA 992s. But we're not just going to replace them like we are with the 2SC 51s. We're going to make sure we replace each pair with a matched pair. So what I do with KSA 992s is I buy like a hundred of them at a time. I get them on this little uh, tape stuff here. And then what I'll do when I get them is I will take this thing, I will hook it up to each transistor, I will read them, and then it'll tell me the gain, which is uh, this number that I've written right here. So now I've got all kinds of uh, KSA 992s here, and I can kind of search through them and get matched pairs, because when, you, when you've got a differential pair in a DC coupled amplifier, you want the gains on each transistor to be the same. So I see right now we've got a 396 here and a 396 on another piece. So we're going to go right there. And then uh, where's our next match pair? I don't see any perfect matches, so we're just going to go with uh, a 381 and a 383. That's going to be close enough for what we're doing here. Looks like I need to read a few more uh, KSA 992s here. Now one thing Pioneer did that's uh, kind of annoying today, but you know it's just the way it was back in the day, is they used transistors with a different uh, pinout pattern. So if we go red, green, blue on this one, for example, the, uh, the DCA55 is going to tell us the, the pinout of the transistor. So we see it's a PNP. The red wire is the base green is collector and blue is emitter so that means that on the transistor we've got a BCE pinout pattern so if we look at the transistor I'll do my best to get the camera to cooperate here if we have the leads coming out facing us and the flat spot going up we've got B we've got C and we've got E base collector emitter so let's hook up a new KSA 992 with red, green, and blue. So we'll go test this and we see that it is ECB instead of BCE. So what that means is if you were to take a picture of the power amplifier board before you started, the uh, orientation of these transistors is not going to be, you know, the same. You're not going to be going for this. Your new one's going to be maybe like this versus uh, the original. So you just need to keep that in mind and be careful when you're installing the uh, transistors. So let's get to the actual board here and we'll talk about how you actually install these. So if you've watched a lot of my videos, you may notice this little piece of paper back here. What is this? Well, it's actually the Echo Wars um, instructions on how to test a transistor with a multimeter if you don't have one of these. Um, I'll, I guess I'll put a link to that in the description of this video because it's good stuff if you're not exactly uh, familiar. But what I've drawn on here is the transistor diagram. So when you're looking at this thing, the uh, the pin with this flat face right here, that's your base. And then you've got two little lines coming out like this. The one without an arrow is the collector. And the one with an arrow is the emitter. And the reason I've got or right there is that the arrow could point this way, it could point that way. And you're going to see that on these circuit boards. So without flipping around the receiver, let's look at the protection circuit board real quick. You can see that, you know, we've got two transistors right there and there they've got the little diagram on them. So you can see there's like the base part and then you've got the two little air and you got the two little lines. One of them has an arrow, one of them doesn't. 
So that's how you know where your B, C, and E are on a Pioneer. So here we are at the uh, power amplifier side. And we know that our differential pairs live right there and there and there and there on the other side. So we know we've got an ECB transistor. So what we will do, I'm doing this one-handed here. So let's start right up there. What I'm doing is I'm kind of taking the collector pin on this transistor and I'm pushing it out backwards so we've got that triangle there so then we put the emitter pin where the arrow is the base pin where it's got the flat and then the collector where we've got no arrow so there it is not too bad for one handed so the next one is going to be the same way we will bend the collector pin back so it actually fits and we'll just kinda go right in there now for the uh, 3503 replacing the 2SC1451 it's gonna be slightly difficult because let's put these guys next to each other here's your brand new 3503 and here's your 2SC1451 What's the difference between these two transistors? Well, besides the bodies, but like look at the difference in the thickness of those leads. The uh, 3503 is uh, slightly overbuilt for this, but this has been talked about in the forums. We found that the 3503 is a very good replacement for this transistor and it works in the circuit on these Pioneer amps. So that's why we use it. What I do here is uh, I'll go from the bottom of the board. What I've got here is like a really big sewing needle right here that I got from like a collection of needles from a long time ago. And all I'll do is I'll take the needle, I'll go where my joint is, see right here, and I'll just kind of put it in there and uh, do what I can to kind of open up the joint a little bit. Just kind of put it in there rotate it you're not like trying to damage it or anything just like open it up slightly and you'll see it'll make the hole a little bit bigger so that you can fit your new 3503 leads through the solder joint and this is definitely going to want to go in kind of tight the 3503 leads are right there where my finger is pointing in addition to opening up that joint and making sure that the lead actually fits through it you also gotta make sure it's clean make sure all the solder is off of it and that the hole is not obstructed in any way because what can happen is you can start trying to push this through and you can damage the foil on these uh, circuit boards here so always make sure it's clean it's the holes big enough and that you can actually get it through without damaging anything so I'm gonna install the other three down here I'll solder them and then we will turn the receiver on and uh, adjust the bias and DC offset okay I'll bring this up on the dim bulb just in case something happened looks like nothing happened since the bulb didn't even light up which is good the relay clicked in which is also good that means that it's uh, that means there's not anything bad going to the speakers. So what I will do now is I'm going to open up the service manual for uh, Pioneer SX 737. I'm going to read which pins on the amp board here to measure across to set the bias. And then I will check the DC offset. So I just spent like half an hour chasing down why the heck are the voltages not changing when I turn the pots is this a bad sub? I know it's not a bad sub. What the heck is going on? Turns out the service manual um, switched around the variable resistors you're supposed to turn to adjust the uh, DC offset and bias. I, uh, I just happened to you know switch around just out of my own troubleshooting and found actual results when uh, I turned the correct potentiometer to adjust the DC offset. Uh, adjusting DC offset on these things is kind of interesting. It's uh, if you turn it a little tiny bit, you'll get like a big spike, and then it'll kind of calm down, come back to normal. 
and uh, yeah, kind of hang around there. We need to go like this, maybe. All right, we at zero now. Close enough. We're gonna call that zero. So we've got DC offset at zero. Bias set to 20 millivolts, and uh, I think we've got sound. Thanks for listening. Yeah, so you were generous. It works. So. We'll call this one good. Um, so yeah, just uh, in conclusion, what we've done here is we've made this amplifier uh, much more reliable, uh, replacing the differential pairs and the bias transistors on these X3X uh, Pioneers uh, really helps their reliability, uh, makes them less prone to failure, taking out your speakers, you know, unpleasant loud noises. And if you've got the means, if you're thinking about restoring your own, uh, definitely add these transistors to your list. So that's about it for this one. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you uh, enjoyed learning about uh, some of the shortcomings of these X3X receivers. You know, despite this generation's shortcomings, it's one of my favorite looking uh, vintage receivers. I think these are just gorgeous. The SX737 is a very nice looking receiver. Alright, I'll see you in the next one.